everybody out there in YouTube land. We're going to do something, a little beautification and a little education, as they say, on uh, these wonderful things back here. The rear drum brakes on my 72 Charger. We're going to put the correct uh, red coating on them because, well, it looks nice, especially looking through the rally wheels. And I just never got around to doing it. So we're going to go pull these off. And I'm going to show you how to prep them and then paint them so you have a uh, correct looking rear brake. Actually, it looks really nice when you look through the rally wheels because you can see through there. Or the Magnum 500s. Or your Krager SS's because you'll be able to uh, see the red paint that's going to go around here from in back of the wheel. I did uh, a little bit of a cast gray on them when I did the original restoration and that was like 14 years ago so it's held up uh, pretty good actually now you can see this is the uh, my aftermarket rear sway bar that it had to uh, make up shortened uh, end lengths for it because I have super stock springs in this car which dropped it a fair amount so let's get to this and uh, Start prepping these. So that came off a little too easy. Drums shouldn't come off that easy. No, they really shouldn't. So first let's go into the drum brake before we even get started anything else. All right, so You can buy the kits that have all the correct spring colors. I can go to Napa and get these. And it's just good to replace the hardware when you're rebuilding the rear brakes. Um, this is the wheel cylinder. Uh, it's actually their original from when the restoration 14 years ago because I used silicone brake fluid. Silicone brake fluid will, dot five will increase the life of all the parts in your car because it is not hydro phobic scopic something where it attracts water it doesn't do that i'll put the right word up above because well i don't remember so here's your axle your studs okay so since they're a little loose we're going to tighten them and the way you do that See, because it, the lock, it locks so it doesn't get loose. So you just kind of twist it. You get a click. A couple of clicks will be good. And we'll check the uh, fit. Stay. Because you want these to have a little bit of friction, but not a lot. Yeah, that's good right there. I'll have to hose that down later. Okay. So, the thing is, on, on muscle cars, you know, cars in the muscle car era, the rear drums, if you have front discs, the rear drums do about 30% or so of the stopping. You know, it, Adding rear disc is not going to really help that much. This car in a road test stopped in 110 feet in 1972, and that was with a 400 in it, a big block that weighs 150 pounds more than the small block in this car. I don't see any reason to make the car stop any faster. The only thing that you get different from rear disc is these lock up a little bit easier than disc brakes do. So, take it as you may, I just like having the simplicity of a rear drum, because this is actually fairly simple. We'll pull the second side off. I had a little more friction on it. Everything looks copacetic here. The pads look, the shoes, their shoes look very nice. So... I'll give that a thing, give that a good old look over, and it looks nice. 
Good, good, good. So, there's that. All right. All right, on to the uh, work table. I'm gonna clean these and paint these. So, first thing of all, you need to get this side clean. And you're only gonna paint up to these edges here. Because that's just the way they were done from the factory. So, I'm going to use a little alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. And I'm really not going to do the face because nobody sees it anyway. So, why waste the paint? And plus, yeah, no one sees it. We'll just stick to the back of my uh, wheels anyway. So you want to start definitely rust free. So not really going to mask because the factory didn't mask. The factory just brushed it on. But you could do this, it's quicker, it's easier. So the top falls off. Did I just really just do that? Well, there's a blooper. white coats you know you'd always need to overcome diversity as my spray top has decided to um, pull apart and it's a little piece of metal up there net you see that look see these these are the adversity you need to overcome sometimes when you're working on old cars so I have a spare somewhere inside, but let's just get this done. And if anybody's curious, this is uh, so Krylon Radiant Red. It pretty much matches Rally Red from uh, the Golden Era of Mopars. Pretty impressive.
All right. So we've got some good coats on here. I want to show you guys a trick. All right. So take a heat gun. And you're going to warm this up and you're going to cure the paint. Because... Um, You know, it's just like the uh, old the Okano bake places. You know, dollar one hundred ninety nine dollar paint jobs. Well, they would bake the paint. It actually makes it very tough. I've done this to a lot of stuff on my car, and the paint becomes just a little bit stronger. But you're giving it a good cure. I mean, you don't want to burn the paint off, but you want to get it hot. The other bonus for this is that you end up getting a little bit of a glossier finish because you've cured it kind of quickly. You can have one more coat after that. And then we'll hit it again with the heat gun. All right. Let's take a let's take a closer look at this. Yeah, see? Look at that. Nice. Okay. We'll let these dry a little bit and we'll put them on the car. Okay, so they've dried sufficiently. I did some other little maintenance on the car, hence grease. It, no matter how clean you make them, you, you seem to always find dirt. You know, if you got something out of this, go ahead and please crush that like button. And if you want to see more stuff relating to old cars, or even like maintaining your normal stuff that you would do yourself, you know, hit that subscribe. Just kind of push it, make it go sparkle, sparkle. So uh, here, this is what we got. <sighs> like I said, you don't have to make them perfect because they weren't from the factory, but there you go. Always use jack stands, because um, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, there's my Bilstein uh, shocks. Highly recommend if you have an old Mopar to put those on. So there you go. All right, we're going to put the wheels back on, torque it down, and then see the finished product. Another little thing before we uh, put these wheels on, put a little bit of grease on there to keep it, the, this is an aluminum wheel and this is a metal, even though there's some paint on it, they'll trust it not sticking and then a little on the threads because the torque on these is wet. Once again, you just don't want them to rust together because that would kind of suck. You don't have to cover it, just kind of get a little on there. So yeah, so now we're gonna get the wheels on. All right, all right, so the last thing to do is to torque them about 80, 85 foot-pounds, just to make sure. I did use an electric on this, but I don't trust anything. See, that one moved. And there you go. 
So, I hope you got something from that. And, uh, you know, share this, because sharing is free. And so you can let other Mopar guys know about how easy it is to make the uh, rear drums look factory correct. And as always, remember to take out your classic car. Well, when the weather's not utterly crappy like it is today, because you'll make someone's day, maybe even your own. I'll catch you down the road.